great to have you here. Seizwe, how is it going? Good, good, Fortune. Thank you so yes. much for having yes. me. Yes, Seizwe, you help coaches and you help them do a lot of amazing things. And in fact, one of the great things you do is you help them go from zero. You know, in fact, that's where your magic is. Like, you're, you don't have any money right now. Don't worry. You know, you're zero right now in your business. This is where yeah. I'm the expert at. We'll get you to six figures and from six figures to seven figures. Right, yes. which will come, will come, will come to all of that uh, in a bit, you know. So, what's your story? Well, um, good question, brother. So, yeah, where do I start? Well, first of all, my name is Cizwe, um, pronounced Cizwe. Many people struggle with that because it's not the most common name, I guess, internationally. Um, however, just as a fun fact, it's a quite common name in South Africa. South Africa. So. It's like Michael <laughs> in South Africa, right? Mm. So yeah, um, as I said, my name is Cesare. Um, right now I'm living in Spain. Mm. So I moved to Spain now almost two years ago. Mm. And before that I was living in Berlin, in Germany. Mm -hmm. And there I was also just living for seven years. Mm. And yeah, so actually I've always like wanted to start something of my own. I've done quite a few businesses in the past. Oh. and um, some of them were successful, some of them were not. Oh. And I would say the most noteworthy one um, that I did start was an app, right? The oh. app called Hopla. Oh. So Hopla was like, uh, if I can get into that, can I? Yes, of course, of course, of course. Yes, we talked about it earlier, yes. Yeah, yes. so Hopla was um, basically a social network similar to Snapchat or even Tinder, but not for dating. Uh -huh. uh, it was like a video um, social media network or primarily based on disappearing videos. That's why I make the comparison with Snapchat. Uh -huh. And yeah, so I started that. That was like one of my first real businesses that I started from the ground up. I, did, I knew nothing about programming, never did anything like that. Um, I just had this idea like there's something missing in the market, right? We've got all these, um, we've got like things like Facebook to stay connected with people you 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 know. And mm -hmm. then we've got things like Tinder to connect with um, romantic um, relationships. Mm -hmm. So Hopla was basically to connect with people, but not romantically. So like me and you could meet there. Um, it was more like video based, you know, like mm -hmm. if you look at um, Tinder, it's all about the picture. Pictures, yes. Well, yes, right. It's, it's, it's quite superficial, hmm. but with video, you can uh, portray so much more energy there, like the, the feeling of the person and so on. So it does not have to be all about lust. <laughs> you hmm. know what I mean? It can be about the personality. Hmm. So there was the idea. And um, yeah, so I drafted that and everything. And we actually even got funding um, from the state of Berlin back hmm. in the day. Oh. where we were even able to create our MVP. So MVP is just like the minimum viable product. Uh -huh. And that was going great and everything. But then the big problem was basically getting more funding for oh. the marketing and for things like servers. Because when you have um, something like a social network, I don't know if you've heard of it, but Facebook pays like, I don't know how much millions for, for their servers or any other social media network, which deals with a lot of data. The oh. servers are quite expensive. So that's what basically, um, yeah, killed that, <laughs> so yes. to say, yes. was the funding. And anyway, um, it was still a good experience because for me, I feel like it was a very big project. Um, it was very good experience. And yeah, it could have went a different way. It didn't, but nonetheless, this, this project that I was working on, Hopla, is actually, the reason I got um, my first quite amazing, not just job, but it was like a career oh. push. Um, I actually got um, a job at uh, the largest marketing agency or one of the largest marketing agencies in the world and also in Germany oh. called BBDO. So yeah, I worked there for a couple of months, but then I still had this urge that I need to do something for myself, right? The pay was good and everything. I really enjoyed the projects they were like um i was actually working as something called a ux designer which um at the time before starting this job i did not even know what that is 
But um, yeah, after Hopla, I was just checking some jobs and I saw this, uh, this job um, offer and reading the description, it was basically the things I was doing in Hopla, like conceptualizing the user experience, the user journey, when they take here in the app, this happens. So I applied to it without even having any formal education, just with my experience with the app. And they actually took me and um, there I was working for in, the, in a project for one of the largest um, car manufacturers in Germany. We're doing for them like the apps and the websites and so on. Oh. So yeah, that was a lot of fun and everything. But as I said, after a while, I really had this urge, I need to do something on my own. And now that I was like in the marketing agency, I felt like um, not just big companies like automakers need marketing. Um, almost anybody needs marketing. So what I did is actually I quit this amazing job, <laughs> oh. which my partner at the time was quite amazed and shocked. Like, how oh, could yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> this is like um, one in a lifetime opportunity and so on. But I just had this this fire inside that I, I need to do my own thing. Um, and so I actually quit it and I went and took a call center job oh. part time. The problem with that one was that it was just full time and even in, I don't know if you worked a lot in the corporate world, but the way I was working, it was not like 6 p.m. you leave. No, people stay there longer and doing their projects and so on. And I was just not feeling that, like, why should I stay longer? I'm not getting paid for that and so on, you know? I wanna do my own thing and I wanna work on my own thing. So that's why I quit. And I, I took on the call center job part-time. Oh. And during that time, I was starting my own agency, so an SMMA, social media marketing agency. Oh. And yeah, after a few months um, in that job, I quit it because I was actually making enough money with my agency, agency. Um, more than I was doing there. Oh. Um, so yeah, also there, a bit of ups and downs. The, the, the income was not stable, right? Some months I was making 10K or almost 10K some months um, less than 3K, like it was very unstable, getting clients, losing clients and everything. But I, I then realized that I just have to really understand who my client is, who am I serving? Because I was trying to serve everybody. I was helping online stores. I was helping um, restaurants. Um, I even had a client who was a key maker, like a, a locksmith and so on. So yeah, that's, I think, what was um, holding the stability back. In any case, within a, within a year of starting my SMMA, I left Germany. I had enough cash and stab st stability uh -huh. to actually leave Germany. And that's how I moved to Spain almost um, two years ago. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, in Spain, I was still serving my clients back in Germany. Um, all good, no difference. Because anyway, even when I was in Germany, most of my clients, I never even saw them face to face. Uh -huh. It was all done online, so it was not a big difference. I didn't even feel any difference oh. being in Spain or being in Germany. Oh. Um, so that went fine. And then just a few months after arriving in Spain, we had the pandemic. Oh. <laughs> so the issue there was that most of my clients were local businesses. Uh -huh. And local businesses had to close down in Germany. Actually, they just reopened like two weeks ago, they've been closed down since November. Oh. And even prior to that, they've been closing, opening. But since November till just a few weeks ago, oh. they've been totally closed, right? Oh. So it was like crazy. So um, I thought, okay, I need to do something about this. I need to expand. Oh. Or, um, so then I thought, okay, then I came across my coach um, who was helping people share their skills. Um, and I thought, okay, that sounds cool because now I was helping established businesses like um, grow, but I felt like I want to help more individuals like uh -huh. myself two years back when I was starting my thing, I would have loved to have somebody who would have held my hand a bit and uh -huh. direct me in the right direction, uh -huh. not to make all these mistakes. And that's um, yeah, when I went into the coaching space and not just that, I expanded from Germany to international. Oh. Right. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing since um, the end of last year. I've been concentrating on my coaching business oh. and yeah, helping coaches and consultants and consultants, especially agency owners, because oh. they can even help them with the ads oh. and everything like this. Oh. Um, yeah, helping them to start with the right foundation, figure out 
who their real client is, what problem they're solving, and everything else that they, they could ever need to be successful. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, love your story, man. Like, um, and one of the things you were saying earlier on was, you know, I was asking you, what is the biggest problem that these coaches, experts, you know, um, what they face? Like, what's the biggest thing they face? Because a lot of them are very amazing at what they do, right? Yeah. And the, the thing now is this, they, they are not, you know, they don't, they don't know, like they're not business people, you know, um, I, a lot of them is because of the pandemic. Now they had to find new meaning and realize, I really find themselves and they say, you know what, I want to take this gift. I want to take this gift. I want to, I want to take this skill. I want to take this thing. I want to go help people. And, you know, you were saying something about the, about the biggest problem they all face. Tell, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, um, each business owner or coach or consultant has different needs, right? But the common thread that I'm seeing with my clients is really the, the foundations are missing. Like they're okay. already out there. They, they know they're experts, like you said, at what they do. Hmm. But um, in order to, to really attract the people you want to work with, you need your foundations. So what I found is that many of them are really struggling with defining who their ideal client is mm. and actually making that little connection in the mind that for me to charge high ticket, I need to solve a, a big problem in the big market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I, I find is the, is the most problem, is the biggest problem. And once we figured that out, we also provide them with the... Um, with the effective strategies, which are already being used by multiple coaches and consultants uh -huh. that we are also working with um, uh -huh. in order to get to that six figures or from six figures to seven figures. Or seven figures. Mm. Okay. And you, you, so for you pricing, for me personally, I don't care about price. You know, and the reason why I don't care about price at this point is that we're able to take a $99 product you know, got a thousand people, you know, subscription and, and made a hundred thousand every month from that. You know, so I don't care about price, you mm -hmm. know, because I, I know that it's all about the market would determine, the market would determine a lot anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so the problem you solve, the value you offer, the packaging of that, the market will determine the rest. Yeah. So, so for you, your message to them is usually if you want a high ticket, you know, you don't care about what they charge, but if you want high ticket, yeah. you, know, you need to find big problems. Yes. Mm. Well, that is our whole modus operandi because mm. we, what we do is we want them to get to six figures in the most quick way. Quick, quick way, yes. And we have found, for us at least, is charging high ticket is easier to sell to, let's say, three people, uh, 3K um, service, which is solving a big life-changing problem mm. for them mm. um, than to maybe I'm wrong with this, but I feel like it's easier to sell to three people than to sell to, like you were saying, a thousand people. Mm. Um, but yeah, that, so we, we actually, even if they're not charging high ticket yet, we show them how to do that. How to do that, yes. Yes, yes. in order to get to that um, eight, 10K per month okay. eff mm. efficiently or mm. fast, yeah. Mm. I mean, of course, initially, you know, getting thousands of people, that's... Uh that's out of the world, you know? So if, so from where they are at, probably need to find a big problem and go solve that. And, yeah. uh, you know, but what we did is we solved the big problem. We realized that there were lots of people who they had s some problem that we could help them with. However, they couldn't afford this place mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So based on that conversation, so, so you know, we, we were getting these sales calls and we're having people fall off and we said, okay, what if we never have anybody fall off? <laughs> you know, what if we ne everybody that comes to us never falls off? So everybody yeah. we spoke to resort to cash flow. And yeah. so it's either, you are, it's either you're, you're a high ticket client or you could get a 99 product. So, so and yeah. it was a lot of marketing to that. I wouldn't advise that model for somebody who's trying to get to six figures really fast. Yeah. You know, your model, your model will, will be very appealing. And how do you find big problems to solve? Um, just to, to your point about um, not, um, not letting the people who cannot afford go, hmm. what we also um, teach, what well, we do show the people how to solve a big problem and charge high. But I do emphasize to my clients that don't just let a client go because oh. they cannot afford it, hmm. right? 
Um, if you're on the phone with a client or a potential client mm. and you really feel like this person is a good fit and you know that you can help them, you could always um, get a small fee now mm. and, and, and the rest, you could base it on the outcome, which is mm. fair for both parties, mm. right? So yeah, just, um, I thought that was also relevant. Really, but, yes. but, yeah, so how to um, find a big problem is to look in the market, brother, and mm. check what are people struggling with? Mm. Right. So if you are, say, um, for example, I've got a very interesting client, a relatively new client, which is doing something that I never thought about, but I think it's a very, very cool um, niche. And the problem that he's solving is he's helping um, athletes, which are not yet top level or, or something like this, mm -hmm. but who want to come into maybe in the, in the lower leagues and so on. And he's helping them to really um, nail down their fitness and their mindset mm. in order to get to that next level. Because this guy himself is a professional um, athlete, volleyball player. Mm. Um, so that is a problem. I mean, just imagine if you are a sports person, you, are, you, you know you got to go to the gym and you got to do this, but there's something missing, right? That you just don't know what. And this person is coming there with a the solution. I've done that before. I've experienced that before. I can show you the way. Oh. So that would be a big problem. A big, oh. yes, a big solution to a big problem. A big problem. Oh. Yeah. For yes. example. Oh. Oh. So it depends on where the person is right now. Like right. I cannot generalize. It's like what what experience do you have already? Um, and how can we match that experience to a problem in the market? In the market. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So um, your, your, your approach is very tailored to the people. So, so it's very, you get, you, you get to really get into what they do. And really, so it's not something a cost will be able to do for them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, exactly. Like we, we, we have a lot of these kinds of one-on-ones. One-on-ones, yes. Yes, where we really dial down in every stage where they're at. When mm. in the beginning, we'll dial down on their current skills, um, what have they, they've done and what they would like to do. And then we take that from there with some questionnaires that I ask them. And then we say, OK, this is the niche that's most suitable to you. Mm. So it's really not a cost. It's really working with me one on one um, and me getting you to that next level. Mm. 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 OK, so in terms of these coaches what are some other problems that they usually that, that is really holding them back you know because now they're clear you yeah know, what else holds them back that could be structure that could be mindset that could be a few things like what what what, what have you noticed well mindset is a big one definitely mm -hmm. i mean i would say mindset i even have my own mindset coach i've got a business coach and a mindset coach i really think Mindset is very, very important mm -hmm. um, because I found, like we always see the, all these motivational things, like believe in yourself and all of mm -hmm. these things you can do it. It's all good and everything, but I found that you cannot just rely on motivation. Mm -hmm. Motivation is very unreliable. Like you cannot predict it. It's sometimes there you feel mm -hmm. energy, everything. So you really need to be focused and clear of, on what is it that you want and what is it that you need to do to, to get that? So I would say one of the big things is mindset, but also one of the values that we provide this, um, these, these clients is our proven marketing strategy, right? Which um, has already been used by many um, coaches and consultants that I'm working with to really get to make um, more than 10K per month. And some of them are also making seven figures. Um, with the same strategies that we are teaching, yeah. Your approach does not involve ads. How um, well, there's many some reasons for that. We can also work with ads, but yes. many of the um, coaches that we work with are like starting out. Starting out, mm. yes. And I feel that before you can go to ads, you really need to understand your market because what we are doing with the foundations we are trying to, to understand the market as much as we can, but the market is the one which will tell us mm -hmm. <laughs> what it wants, right? Yes. Just trying to make it as easy as possible mm. for us to, to, to have that perfect uh, market product fit. Mm. But I feel that um, with organic, you're getting so much more feedback without having to 
risk your cash in case mm -hmm. like you are starting from zero. Mm -hmm. um, and once you really understand that you once you really nailed down your, your niche and you, you now not just theoretically understand who your mm -hmm. um, target market Find is, mm -hmm. but also practically, and then you can we can go to towards ads because then we know who we, who we, we want to talk to and we know what messaging works mm. rather than going straight to ads without really knowing the right um, messaging and target. Mm. 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 So your your advice would be hone your message, get clear on your on your on on what you do your off your offer the problem all of that stuff probably have a few case studies already you know so now you have exactly. a proven thing um testimonials like run ads without testimonials mm, mm. very tough <laughs> you know so with the organic um way we are already getting testimonials we also show our clients how to get testimonials without even having their first clients mm. uh -huh. which is quite, quite a hack like they they can help people like um in a discovery call mm. And maybe this person, for whatever reason, right now is not the, the right time for them or cannot afford it or something else. Oh. But this person still feels like they got a lot of value. There's no problem with this person giving you a testimonial for that call. And this is oh. very powerful then later on. Oh. Oh. No, yeah. I, I, uh, I had someone tell me once that her clients will not give her testimonials because, again, the, lots of them are in the public eye. So they mm. don't, they they wouldn't want to to show their face or show their thing. Uh, you know, they, they wouldn't want to give a case study. So what would you, what would you advise such such people? Well, I've not experienced something like that something before. Like that I before. Didn't want to do it? Mm -hmm. uh, what I would suggest to if this was my client, I would say, okay, just ask these clients to send you an email. Mm -hmm. What they with what they with what you help them and so on why they came to you what you were able to do if they were happy if they would recommend you mm. so you could blur out the surname mm. and it's just the first name yes. but, um, solution yes. <laughs> problem solved oh so it's just screenshot the email yes yeah yeah like if they don't want to be on video because they're a public figure or whatever mm. which is already a bit strange because like this person helped you what's the problem what's right the problem with that mm -hmm. yeah but if mm. You do have some client like this. I would just say, ask them to send you an email or even a message in Messenger or WhatsApp or whatever, oh. um, stating what you're able to help them with, and if you, um, if they would recommend you to somebody else, oh. and you just scratch out their name or their email, and there you've got your testimonial, which you can use as a screenshot. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah. So, what do you think about this statement? Nobody knows. In marketing, nobody knows. We're all testing. We only know what is working today. What do you think about that statement? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I agree with that. Mm. Um, I mean, yes, you are testing. I mean, marketing is about testing, especially if you are running ads. Without mm. testing, you will fail. Mm. But there, I, I think you have to agree that there are some strategies which can work better than others. Than others. It's yes. not like we are all in the dark, mm. right? There are some people who, are, who have a little torch <laughs> lamp mm. next to them mm. uh, and so on. So um, I would say it depends also on which marketing strategy you are using. Mm. And um, the longer you work with the marketing strategy, the, the more you're going to feel more comfortable with it and the more it's going to be more effective for you. So um, you might not be the no necessarily, but you might be um, having a bit more knowledge than somebody who's starting out. Like let's yeah. say somebody right today says, I want to do organic marketing. I would say mm. that somebody who's been doing organic marketing for a couple of months Mm. is more in the know than this person. Mm. Okay. okay. What, what is organic marketing? So organic marketing is basically how I would describe it is um, getting attention or marketing basically, but without actually spending money, mm. but instead spending time. Time. That's the difference. Yeah, it's, mm. it's time-based time time more based. Mm. Than, than, um, than paid. It's like, can I say the opposite of paid marketing? The opposite I don't know. of paid marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know if that's um, that's a way, good way of explaining it, but yeah, I would say it's like yeah, it's either organic or paid. Mm. And organic is yeah, just reaching out 
with your time, or it does not have to be your time because you can also hire think people like VAs to to do the outreach for you. Oh, yeah. mm. um, but it's not like um, yeah, just making an ad and and letting it go. Basically, okay. it's more and it's more hands on. Mm. Yeah, it's more closer to the to the heartbeat of the market. I would mm. say. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And in terms of um, organic marketing, what do people need to keep in mind? Before they start going out and doing all kinds of organic stuff, like what do they need to keep in mind? These experts, these coaches. Yeah. So one important thing that I have found is that when you're doing organic marketing, it's basically um, you are self-branding yourself, right? You are you're advertising yourself. Hmm. And what I would say you need to know is that don't try to be somebody you are not. Hmm. Just try to be yourself mm. because the people who resonate with you are the people who you will want to work with. Uh -huh. Because in any way, you're going to offend people whether you are um, yourself or not. So why the hell not just be yourself? Just then, be yourself, you know? yes. <laughs> yeah, because somebody's going to get offended. Even if you're trying mm. to be somebody else mm. and trying to fit in, there's always mm. going to be somebody who's going to be offended about that. Mm. So, and furthermore, um, the people who are offended of you being yourself, anyway, these are not your clients. You, you won't want to work long time with these people, mm. right? So mm. the people who resonate with who you are and what you are saying and doing mm. are the people who you will even enjoy working with, mm. especially in my line of work, where I work a lot with the people one-on-one. -on -one, I really need to feel like this is somebody I can work with long-term and we understand each other and, and so on. So... Mm. That's one major thing is um, if you're going to be doing organic marketing as a as your own brand, mm. be yourself. Mm. So, so the first thing is be yourself. Or, or establish who you are and go out as that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, mm, so be yourself. But that could be, that could be, you know, be yourself could be because now they are in this professional space. You know, so now be yourself could not be, you know, could blur the lines between personal and professional. Like, so what do you think about that? Um, in which way? Can you elaborate? Okay. You know, so be, be, be yourself, right? You know, show up as you, all of that. Yeah. You know, but, but now you're speaking in a certain way, you're showing up in a certain way or dressing up in a certain way. You know, and now, would that would it, would that not affect you professionally? Well, I don't know if somebody like no. This is what I wear normally, mm. <laughs> for example. Um, um, this is how I, I speak. This is how I speak. This is who I am. I speak, this is who I am. Who I am. And as long as I'm solving that problem mm. for for you, mm. and I'm not offensive mm. or not like. Um, yeah, racist or something. Don't be a racist, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if yes. you're racist, don't be yourself. For don't be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you are just a, a, a normal person who um, just um, enjoys helping other people, that's the mm -hmm. thing. Like, if you're going to be a coach, you need to enjoy helping people. Otherwise, go to forex or some other thing or drop shipping or something like this. Yes. If you are going to be a coach, a consultant you need to be um, happy with helping people, helping people and working with people, mm -hmm. right? And, and so on. So um, I, I still stick to it. Yes, be mm -hmm. yourself. Be yourself, <laughs> be yourself and, be, and let the focus be laser beam on helping people. Yes, yes. I mean, be yourself, but while talking about the topic at hand. At hand. Right? Focus, yes. on the, focus on what's important to at, yes. at large, you know, the big picture. Exactly, mm. which is why we emphasize so much on the foundations mm. that you need to understand as much as possible in the beginning um, who your client is, your ideal client, and what problem you are solving for them. Mm. Mm. So once you can be yourself around that framework, it's totally fine. Mm. I mean, there's a, there's a story, there's a great story about a guy who's, who saw his father not follow his passion, but, you know, he was a good man, of course. Like, he tried to provide for his family, you know, do, do, uh, and, you know, work so hard, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but he watched his father fail at something he did not love. And he realized, hmm, we would fail or not fail 
whether we're you know either way so you might as well just do the thing that you love <laughs> exactly yes. i agree with that i agree with that yeah. so uh we were speaking earlier about your message and you say one of your core messages or beliefs is really do not give up yeah do not give up how did you come up how did you come up with that well this is just from my own experience from all the things that I've tried out have failed and so on, but I am still nonetheless proud of them and happy of them because they're the things that led me to this. Like I mentioned earlier on, this app story was quite a big project and so on. Um, it failed. I did not give up. I continued. I got an amazing, amazing job. Hmm. Um, I still had bigger dreams. So I, I pursued that. Um, my agency had some kind of trouble. Um, last year, I did not just sit back and say, okay, I'm, not, I'm just going to get a job now or something like this. Um, I push forward and yeah, I never give up because only when you say I give up, uh, then, then is when you, you lose. Mm -hmm. Like before that point, um, you are still in the game, I would say. Mm -hmm. Be yourself, focus on helping people and never give up. Thank you very much for coming today, man. Um, and if there is anything you want to leave out, you know, you want to you want to say to to the world or to to coaches, what would that be right now? Um, yeah, I think I've said <laughs> quite a few. Just never give up. I think was a good um, ending point mm -hmm. because I know many coaches. I mean, statistically speaking, coaches eighty percent of them. I don't know if you know this statistic. Eighty percent of them are struggling to get clients. Yes. So, um, yeah, my message would be don't give up. Mm -hmm. There are strategies which work better than others. The others. And um, if you are really somebody passionate about trying to help others, mm -hmm. don't give up because there is somebody out there who needs your help. Mm -hmm. Needs exactly what you are offering. Mm -hmm. So um, if you are struggling right now to get in front of those people, um, don't give up. They, mm -hmm. they are there. They are waiting for you just Try to understand who who are they mm. and what is their core problem that they have mm. and go out there and help the people and it's a win-win for you and and for them so mm. never give up <laughs> don't, don't don't give up be yourself and come work with C's way you know <laughs> and for those who want to work with you how what's the best way to actually connect with your business and uh, work with you so um mainly i'm on facebook Mm -hmm. um, so just as you see my name there, Sizumo Palami, just put that into Facebook and send me a message or even book a call directly there mm -hmm. um, with me and we can just go over where you are right now, um, where you want to be and how we can come together and make that happen. Mm. All right, man. Thank you very much for coming. It was great to have you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.